The matter creates a state of movement, and from that wind arises. In this situation, the wind and the matter come in contact. The wind and matter rub together. Thus, there is a light of fire which is changeable by nature. Sutra: The brightness of the matter produces moisture, and from the light of fire, steam arises. Thus, there is the pervasiveness of water which encompasses the realms in the ten directions. Commentary: The brightness of the matter produces moisture. When metal is heated, it will sweat. Water drops will appear in its glossy surface. Because of the fire, a moisture is eventually produced on the metal. This moisture is one aspect of water, and from the light of fire, steam arises. From the moisture of the metal, a moist vapor is produced. When the light of fire from below arises. It creates steam as it passes over the metal. Thus, there is the pervasiveness of water which encompasses realms in the ten directions. Because of the phenomenon of condensation and evaporation, when the metal meets fire, there is a water cycle which encompasses the lands of the ten directions. Sutra fire. Rises and water falls, and the combination sets up a solidity. What is wet becomes the ocean and seas. What is dry becomes the continents and islands. Commentary: After explaining the pervasiveness of water, the Buddha tells how the seas and mountains come into being. Fire rises and water falls. Fire leaps high, water flows down. The previous passage says that the metal sweats and the fire rises, so the moisture evaporates, thus creating the water cycle. So the fire rises and the water falls, and the combination sets up a solidity. This produces the solid earth. What is wet, the water that descends and collects, becomes the oceans and seas. What is dry becomes the continents and islands, the dry land. Sutra, because of this, fire often rises up in the oceans, and on the continents, the streams and rivers ever flow. Commentary: Because of this, because of the because of fire rises and the water falls, what is wet becomes the seas, and what is dry becomes the land. Fire often rises up in the oceans, volcanoes, and the like arise. Also, it is the sea. There often arises the light of fire, and on the continents, the streams and rivers ever flow. The rivers and streams flow on ceaselessly. Sutra: When the power of water is less than that of fire, high mountains result. So it is that mountain rocks. Give off sparks when struck and become liquid when melted. Commentary: Water and fire battle with one another, and when the power of water is less than that of fire, mountain high mountains resound. When the fire overpowers the water, high mountains are formed. So it is that mountain rocks give off sparks when struck and become liquid when melted. When you pile the rock, sparks form out of it. When you heat rocks to a certain point, they melt like in a volcanic eruption. How can volcanoes spew forth fire? It is because of the battle for power between water and fire. Sutra: When the power of earth is less than that of water, the outcome is grasses and trees. So it is that groves and meadows turn to ashes when burned and wood water when twisted. Commentary: When the power of earth is less than that of water, the outcome is in grasses and trees. When the strength of the earth is not as great as the strength of water, the conditions of water and earth produce the grasses and trees. So it is that groves and meadows turn to ashes. 
when burned and wood water when twisted. Ashes are simply earth. If you twist the blades of grass or parts of the tree, liquid will flow out. Sutra, a false nest is produced with interaction as the seeds, and from these causes and conditions comes the continuity of the world. Commentary, a false nest is produced with the interaction as the seeds. A false thought arises and fire and water become the seeds of mountains by mutual interaction. From these causes and conditions comes the continuity of the world. From this interaction which forms the seeds, the world ends and then begins again. It is destroyed and then arises once more. Once it arises, it is again destroyed from production, dwelling, decay and emptiness. And various circumstances, the continuity of the world is perpetuated, which goes on without cease. Sutra. Moreover, Purna, the false brightness is none other than the mistake of adding light to enlightenment. Commentary. Moreover, Purna, I will explain further. The false brightness is none other than. The mistake of adding light to enlightenment is not something else playing tricks on you. It's simply that you wanted to add light to enlightenment. That's how the problem arose. Adding light to enlightenment is just like putting a head on top of a head. Sutra. After the falseness of an object is established, the faculty of understanding cannot transcend it. Due to this cause and condition, Hearing does not go beyond sound, and seeing does not surpass form. Commentary After the falseness of an object is established, the faculty of understanding cannot transcend it. The falseness of an object refers to the appearance of karma and corresponds to the earlier passage. Once an object is falsely set up, the word faculty here refers to a false ability, the appearance of turning and corresponds to the earlier passage, your false subject arises. Understanding here refers to ignorance, which is not flexible and cannot transcend the falseness of an object. Due to this cause and condition, hearing does not go beyond sound and seeing does not surpass form. Because of the appearance of karma and the condition of the appearance of turning, we don't hear anything beyond sound when we listen, and we don't see anything beyond form and appearance when we look. Sutra, forms, smells, tastes, and objects of touch, six forms senses are realized. Because of them, there is division into seeing, sensation, hearing, and knowing. Commentary: Because seeing does not surpass form, there arise forms, smells, tastes, and objects of touch. This list of forms implies sounds and dramas as well. The state of the six defiling objects, thus six falsenesses are realized. The six organs and six objects together create the six consciousnesses. Because of them, there is division into seeing, sensation, hearing, and knowing. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, sensation, and knowing. The six consciousnesses. The six consciousnesses are originally the nature of the treasury of the first come one. So it is said, one pure brightness in its origin. It divides into six interacting aspects. The one pure brightness. Is the nature of the treasury of the first karma. The six interacting aspects are the eyes which see form, the ears which hear sounds, the nose which smells scents, the tongue which tastes flavors, the body which is aware of sensation, and the mind which knows dramas. They are said to be six, but in reality they are one. They are a function of the nature of the treasury of the first karma. Sutra, similar karma binds together, union and separation bring about transformation. Commentary, similar karma refers to the karma one carries and to 
one's father and mother disposes and conditions are similar. Similar karma also refers to the mutual arisal of thoughts of love which binds together. Similar karma produces emotional love and prevents separation. Men and women become stuck together like glue. This binding together creates birth by womb and eggs. Sutra, one sees that a bright spot is generated. At the sight of the bright spot, conception comes into being. Differing views produce hatred. Similar views create love. The flow of love becomes a seed and the conception is drawn into the womb. Intercourse happens with a mutual attraction of similar karma and so the other causes and conditions that create the Kalala, the Abuddha and the rest. Commentary One sees that the bright spot is generated. How do people become pupil? When a person comes into being, consciousness which arrives first and when a person dies, the eighth consciousness is the last to leave. So it is said, last to go, first to come, first it is the host. Before the earth consciousness leaves, the body will remain warm. Once the eighth consciousness goes, the body gets cold. Once it goes, it becomes the intermediate yin body. If one was a person, then one's intermediate yin body has the appearance of a person. If one was an animal, the intermediate existence body has the appearance of an animal. It is just as if it was cast out from a mold. No matter how far away, from its potential father and mother it may be. It will find them if it has connections with them. So the intermediate existence body, everything is pitch black. We have lamp light and sunlight and moonlight, but the intermediate existence body can't see them. What is this is black as ink. So when the potential father and mother have intercourse, it will see a pinpoint of light at that place because it has connections with them. At the sight of the bright spot, conception comes into being. What is conceived? Thoughts. Differing views produce hatred. When people's opinions are not the same as yours, you come to hate them. Similar views create love. When someone has false thoughts identical with your own, you grow to love them. If the intermediate existence body is made is male, it will love the mother and hate the father. It will want to strike its father and steal its mother. It wants to have intercourse with its mother, so the origin of people is very bad. When it loves its mother and hates its father, with that one thought of ignorance, it enters the womb. The flow of love becomes a seed, and the conception is drawn into the womb. If the intermediate existence of body is female, it will love the father and be jealous of the mother. That is how conception takes place. Those who like to talk about love can't end birth and death. Love is the root of birth and death. Those who like to talk about love can very quickly end birth and death. How can I contradict myself this way and say that these opposite statements are both true? It's just here that the wonder lies. You advocate emotional love, but emotional love takes one down the road of birth and death. Why? People are born from love and desire and they die from love and desire. This is the, the ordinary occurrence. Everyone walks this road from birth and death this road of birth and death. So how can I say that if you think love is so important, you can very quickly end birth and death? If you think love is so important, if you are so intent upon it, you should see through it and be done with it. The sea of suffering is boundless. A turn of the head is the other shore. If you see through it, you can end birth and death. People are like cabbage worms, which are born in a cabbage, 
and die in the cupboard. People are born in love and desire and die in love and desire. The flow of love becomes a seed. Men and women profess their love and keep expressing it until there is tangible evidence of it. Once the love becomes tangible, a seed can be produced. Conception here refers to the eighth consciousness, the intermediate yin body, also called the intermediate existence body of the intermediate skanda body. And so, they are the causes and conditions that create the Kalala, the Abuddha, and the rest. Kalala is a Sanskrit word that refers to the first week of embryonic development, the slippery coagulation. The second week of development is called the Abuddha, the Golubu. The third week is called Peshi, or soft flesh. The fourth week is called Gana, or solid flesh. The fifth week is called Prashaka, or rudimentary embryo. Let us look at this from the point of view of the traveling subconditioned causation. The reason men and women fall in love, just that thought of love is ignorance. That one thought of ignorance. Ignorance conditions activity. The activity is intercourse. Activity conditions consciousness. This is the eighth consciousness referred to above in the line conception is received into the womb. The consciousness is the intermediate kind of body entering the womb. Consciousness conditions name and form. Name refers to the first through fourth weeks of embryonic development. Form refers to the fifth and later weeks of embryonic development. Name and form condition the six agencies. By the seventh week of embryonic development, the organs are fully formed. The embryo has by now developed eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. The six agencies condition contact. Once the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind are formed, there is an awareness of contact. The embryo in the mother's womb experiences the sensation of contact. Contact conditions feeling. The embryo is receptive to the contact. Feeling conditions love. When it receives the contact, it gives rise to love. This is the real beginning of love. And so to answer the question, why men and women come to love one another is because even at the fetal stage, the cause has been planted already, their thoughts of love. Love conditions are uh, conditions in grasping. Once there are thoughts of love, one wants to have the object of love for one's own. One wants to become that thing, grasping conditions becoming, becoming conditions birth. Once you've got it, you are born. Birth conditions old age and death. Once there is birth, there is death. So one has contemplated the travelings of conditioned causation and know that the seed, the causes and conditions are impure. The father's semen and the mother's blood are unclean things. If you want to end birth and death, the first thing you must do is not give rise to ignorance. How do you do that? Don't have thoughts of emotional desire. Without ignorance, there is no activity. Men and women get involved all because of that first thought of ignorance. And what is ignorance? It is just, it is I don't know. For instance, when a man sees a woman, she might be beautiful, but ultimately why does he might move? It is just when one's mind moves, that one gives rise to ignorance. And when women have an emotional reaction to men, it is the same thing. Ignorance, therefore, is the root of birth and death, and it is the place that it all starts. If you understand the travelings of conditioned causation and are not turned around by them, then when ignorance is distinguished, activity is extinguished. When activity is extinguished, consciousness is extinguished. When consciousness is extinguished, never form are extinguished. 
when newborn form are extinguished, the six sense organs are extinguished. When the six sense organs are extinguished, contact is extinguished. When contact is extinguished, feeling is extinguished. When feeling is extinguished, love is extinguished. When love is extinguished, grasping is extinguished. When grasping is extinguished, becoming is extinguished. When becoming is extinguished, birth is extinguished. When birth is extinguished, old age and death are extinguished. This is the method of returning to existence to extinction. If you take the road of arising in succession, you become a person. If you return to extinction, you can become a Buddha. So, Ahas contemplate the travelings of conditioned causation and think, how do people come to be? Ah, their coming is extremely unclean. The combination of the father's man and the mother's blood to make an embryo is impure. So, they suffer ignorance and end birth and death. During the reign of the Emperor Wu of, Wu of Liang, the Buddha Dharma flourished. Whenever there was a wedding reception, Dharma masters were invited to recite sutras. On children's birthdays, Dharma masters were invited to recite sutras. In short, no matter what the occasion, Dharma masters were invited to recite sutras and give their blessing. They would give a short speech about the auspiciousness of the event, what a lucky occasion it was. At that time, there was a wealthy man who was celebrating the marriage of his son. He invited Chen Master Chu Kung to recite sutras and give the blessing. When Chen Master Chu Kung arrived and looked around, he said, How strange, how bizarre. The grandson marries the grandmother. The daughter is the mother's flesh. The drum, the sun beast, is stretched with the father's skin. Pigs and sheep are on the seat. The six close skin cook in the brazier. People gather to celebrate. I see all this as a form of suffering. Why was the grandson marrying his grandmother? It was because when the grandson was two years old, his grandmother died. As she was dying, she grabbed her grandson's hand and said, I'm at the point where I can't let go of everyone else, but I can't forget about my grandson, who will take care of him in the future. And she died clutching her grandson's hand. After her death, she went before King Yama and he said, Oh, you love your grandson so much? Fine, go back and be your grandson's wife. So she was reborn as a woman, and when she came of age, her grandson chose her as his wife. How did Chen Master Chukum know this? Because he had the ability to know others' thoughts and the ability to perceive past lives. He had the Buddha eye. When he looked in front of the house, and he said, The daughter is the mother's flesh, because he saw a little girl chewing a chunk of pork. Her mother had died and been reborn as a pig. The pig had been slaughtered and cooked, and she was actually eating the flesh of her mother. When he inspected the musicians in the band by the entrance way, he said, The drum, the sun beast, is stretched with the father's skin. The drummer was hitting a drum stressed with deer hide. His father had died and been reborn as a deer. The deer had been slaughtered and is high chained, and the drummer was actually beating his own father. Then Chen Master Chirkung noticed that pigs and sheep are on the seat on the seat. He saw pigs and sheep sitting like guests on the gang, the high brick that's in the house. They were people now, but in their former lives, they had been pigs and sheep. In their former lives, they themselves had been eaten. So now they were reborn as people who in turn ate pigs and sheep to even up the dead. When the Chen Master took a look at the cooking pots, he exclaimed, This close skin cook in the brazier. This kind of close skin refers to 
relatives on the father's side and the mother's side, kin of the brother and sisters and so forth. They had been close relatives of these people, but now had been reborn as pigs and sheep, had been slaughtered and were being cooked in the brazier. Chen Master Chu Kung summarized, people gathered to celebrate. Everyone who came was saying congratulations and best wishes. But the master notes, I see all this as a form of suffering. What I see is actually suffering.